everybody. I'm not supposed to start for another minute, but I just thought I'd say hi. Do you, are you all um, board game enthusiasts? Yeah? Oh, all right. Makes what's it your, easy audience then. Yeah. We're gonna, what, we don't have your, to tell you why games are important. <laughs> what, what game is your favorite? So lots of favorites. Yeah, those are skill based <laughs> games, yeah. What about you? Cash oh. flow. Awesome. We used to make our kids play cash flow once a month with jelly beans. We had to, we <laughs> That's had to your reward. We had to bribe them because the the game wasn't fun enough by itself. And so Especially she, if you get divorced twice in that game, right? Yeah. yeah. Wipes you out. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're good, sweetie. Why don't you go ahead and... Are we, are we ready yeah. to start? Good? Yep. Okay. My name is Tali. And this I'm is Scott. my husband, Scott. We, are co we, are, we founded Free Market Kids, and we are here to talk about using games to teach people stuff, like concepts. For me, the only reason I am standing here is because he made me understand Bitcoin by making a board game, which we're going to talk about later. He'll talk about the game and I'm just going to tell you why I needed that. When he started hearing people talk about Bitcoin, I was not interested. He was elbowing me. We were homeschooling four kids and I was crazy busy. It was a 24 seven job. And he said, Hey, I've been hearing people talk about this Bitcoin thing. I think we should pay attention so we can teach it to our kids. And I said, number one, how can it possibly be real? It's digital. Because in my head, money is something you can touch. And number two, I don't have time. Why are you bugging me? <laughs> and he said, no, no, no. You really need to understand this. Here's this perfect video. It's 10 minutes. It was done by a MIT professor and it explains blockchain and it's going to be crystal clear to you. Just watch this video. So I watched it. I gave him 10 minutes because that's all I had. I watched it. It made no sense to me went over my head completely. I'm like, stop bugging me. Stop talking about Bitcoin. I don't know. It has nothing to do with me. Stop. And he said, no, no, no. We really need to tell our kids about it. Okay. Can you please listen to this two hour long podcast? Do I look like I have two hours to listen to a podcast? I don't. And he goes, no, but if you would just read the Bitcoin standard, it's going to be so clear. You're going to know the history of money, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no, I don't have time. The thing was that I was stuck on the technical side of it. I'm not, I don't have a computer background. I don't really understand things conceptually in that way, especially when you're talking about digital technology, zeros and ones, meaning something other than what you see on a screen, right? So finally, I think out of desperation, he said, can I please just explain it to you with some Mahjong tiles and playing cards? And let me just explain blockchain to you. So that was his first prototype. And from there going forward, like every once in a while, he'll bring out another prototype and my, me and my kids will be like, Oh my God, not another prototype. What the heck? Um, but he persisted. And over the course of two years, he finally convinced me that Bitcoin is real. And because I was convinced that Bitcoin could be real, you know, the whole cryptology thing, that's why I was willing to listen to the first audible book. And fast forward, I think a little bit more than a year. Here we are. I have two Bitcoin podcasts. One I'm using to share Bitcoin with women and one we're doing together to share homeschooling, which is our background with Bitcoiners who are interested in self custodying their children's education. So it's very powerful. We have brought this game everywhere that Bitcoin meetups will allow us to come and share it. And it's, it's such a wonderful, conversation opener because there are so many people out there, Bitcoiners who are having trouble getting their families and friends to even be open to the conversation. I wasn't willing. It just was, you can't convince me that's important to me. Maybe in the, in the way that he was trying to share it. But when we play a game, if you just say, Hey, come over for game night and you know, let's make some popcorn. Let's make some hot cocoa, you know, maybe bring some wine or beer or whatever you play a game. And if they want to win, you know, you need to understand game mechanics and the game that he created explains Bitcoin through the game mechanics. So if you play a game and at the end of it, 
you get nothing out of it except the most important lesson, which is get your Bitcoin into cold storage, you win, right? But also, if they care about winning the game, they're going to start asking you questions. And if they ask you questions and you answer and you talk about Bitcoin, then they are open to listen. But if you just say, hey, come here, I want to tell you about Bitcoin, the fiat system sucks, and Bitcoin's amazing, and we have you know, the 21 million, blah, 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 they're going to be like, talk to the hand. So we are here to share this game with you, and I hope it will help you guys go and uh, spread Bitcoin in a, maybe a slightly different way. Hey, real quick, I'm going to let's show a couple pictures of different events. Maybe you can comment on, unless you want me to on. Yeah, you go ahead. You want me to. All right. So, all right, just the up down arrow. All right. So I'm, I'm kind of a geek. I'm a systems engineer background. I've been going to a game conference probably every year for a decade other than, than COVID. And as Tali said, I got into Bitcoin before she did. And for me to combine that, we're homeschoolers. How do you teach this? Something that you, you think is really valuable to other people that you, you want to share this, this really awesome thing with. And um, eventually it ended up with, this, with the game. And what's happened over the course of the last year is we brought this to a lot of different, a lot of different events. So we were in, we were in Miami. Uh, we were, right before that was thank God for, for Bitcoin. This one was a big deal for me personally because Preston Pish is the reason I had gotten into Bitcoin. So that was a big deal. Like the bottom one here, uh, we have four kids and our girls are in college. Tali actually had a, actually went up and organized an event. They were just playing in a, a dorm room and she was introducing Bitcoin to, to college students who didn't have any idea of what this, this strange thing was. And, and so it's been, you know, in a short conversation like we're having today, it's difficult to get across. But what strikes me about a conference like this is everybody, no one's here because they have to be here, right? We're all here because we're, we're, we're passionate about this. And there's a certain feeling you get when you're in person that you don't get when you're on Twitter or Nostra or any, anything else online. I'm a huge believer in that, um, the fellowship side of games. And so this aspect of it to me is a huge benefit, especially after COVID, but just think about how much time we spend with screens as opposed to actually talking to each other like human beings. Um, so these kind of events where you can, bring together people who are passionate about, in this case, Bitcoin and freedom in general, a lot of freedom concepts, really, really a fulfilling type of events. You can go to the next one. So these are diff different meetups. The one that I would call up, uh, call out on here is the, the one in the top there. One of the places we went to, this was in Virginia, right? That was Virginia. And we, we play with some really young players. That's one of the common questions people ask. Hey, your game, how old do you have to be? On the box, I have 14 and up. And you just, you have to be good with math. And, you know, we just wanted to be safe legally what we put on there. But when, in practice, what we've found is people bring this to younger and younger groups. I think in this group, we've, we've had as young as five or seven in I these think groups. I the youngest one was five. The one, this one, she was five. She was so cute. <laughs> And I will tell you, adults that you think you know games, kids learn faster than you. And it's a very humbling experience when the younger generation beats you. Uh, but that's good, though. We have all kinds of anecdotes where there's uh, one young kid telling another young kid, hey, you better get your Bitcoin in cold storage. Uh, you just hear like these little things in there and you're like, oh, we got it. You're, you're there. So I anyway. just want to add also, as some of these Bitcoin meetups, the teenagers get really into it. And when they make a pile of Bitcoin on their wallet, they're like, oh, man, I wish these were real. And isn't that what we all want to hear, right? That they want some Bitcoin. So, uh, Yes. Um, if we, by the way, just as a side note, Tali and I are the co-organizers for the Bitcoin Louisville meetup called Kentucky on a BTC. If anybody's interested in your own area about having game events, we have a lot of recommendations. So for example, the one I'll call out is you, you should open it up to families and pre-coiners. And the, the, the benefit of the, for us, of this experience is you don't have to know anything about Bitcoin to play this, this game. And the way that I was trying to reach Tali with Bitcoin was very technical. As a system engineer, I thought I was communicating clearly. It wasn't working. And think about that. You say, hey, bring your, your pre-coiner spouse, bring your girlfriend, bring your kids, make it a family event. So if anybody wants to talk to us later about having kind of game nights 
game events, they, they add a lot of variety to, to meetups that sometimes get into kind of the same, the same types of things. But. Well, I just want to quickly share a story. We were at a Bitcoin meetup, and there was a couple there. Here, I'll just stand over here. Uh, so the, the guy was a Bitcoiner, and he was very techy. He was an OG, and he, he, just, he knew everything about Bitcoin. And the partner that he brought, she was only there to support him. She had no interest, and you can see on her face she was very close to off. And we were supposed to have some kind of te technical presentation there. And for some reason, the internet wasn't cooperating. And we're sitting there, we were, everybody was gathered, we had a meeting going, and they were like, what are we gonna do now? And we happened to have the game with us, and we said, let's just play a game. That was the only reason that she was there and happened to play the game. Now what happened was, in the beginning of the game, she was really intimidated. She's like, I don't know if I can play, I don't understand Bitcoin. And her partner said, no, 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 I'm going to help you. So that from the beginning of the game, he was just whispering in her ear, like, you should do this, you should do this. By the middle of the game, the hand went like this, and she goes, I got it. <laughs> By the end of the game, she said, I want to buy this game. I want to buy it with Bitcoin. I want you to show me which wallet to use. And I don't want you doing it for me. I want to do it. You talk me through it. And that entire transformation took 45 minutes. And that's the power of an interactive experience. So, all right, let's go to the next slide. I am just trying to keep an eye on the on the time. I I mentioned that I kind of geek out. One of those areas that I like to geek out on is game theory, and this is something that not that just there's not enough time to to go into that for today. So I bring this up though because I do think it sets the stage for what I was trying to do when I created the game. So if you think about it. Um, there's a game theory actually is everywhere. It's, it's in relationships, it's at work, it's, it's not just this mathematical thing that statisticians do or something else. And so for me, the similarities as you look at, uh, uh, when you look at different things, you, you see the same principles applied in so many different areas. And for me, I happen to think that's very interesting. And just go to the next slide. So I actually had a chance um, to, to talk about game theory and the game on Preston's on Preston's show and one of the things I did I, I bring this up because this is how I want to connect the dots to the to the game in that show I, I outlined if you were to take a game theory perspective to Bitcoin and just put yourself in the shoes of Satoshi it's not exact right because it's 40 years of technology that led up to 2008 for the white paper but just as a mental framework you say hey Hey kid, you're, you're Satoshi, it's 2008, and you want to fix the money. Where do you start, right? And I just back up from there using game theory at each step. So go to the next slide, please. And so if you, if you do that, you say, okay, where do we want to be? So you're looking forward and then you're reasoning backwards on that. And it's not just one problem that you have to solve. The beautiful thing about Bitcoin is it's, it's layers of problems, right? And you say, well, one thing is, we, we need a money that is immutable, right? We cannot have like the debasement of money that's been done historically. We're gonna be right back where we are now with printing money in, in whatever form it could be. It could be silver coins and clipping and you know, you take your, take your pick. And so it, using this methodology, you just kind of back up, okay, if you have that, then what? Well, now we have a trust issue. So you capped it at 21 million, congratulations, you solved that, that game or that challenge. But now you got a problem of trust. And, or even if you trust somebody, that could be a target. You know, so if it's, if it's one entity, the government can just put a gun to the head of that entity and say, hey, 6102, we're taking all your gold, right? I mean, it's, it's very, you, you need a way of breaking that up. You say, well, fine, if you decentralize it, you don't trust anybody, great. Now you have this problem called the Byzantine generals problem because <laughs> How do you have a decentralized system? How do you communicate? And so what's really cool is, I won't go through each step of this, but this is the mental framework of going into, all right, I want a game to teach my family about Bitcoin. And Bitcoin actually isn't just one thing. It is like layers and layers and layers of, of things. So where do you start and simplify that to the point where you can play it in 45 minutes? So there are a lot of different kind of gamers out there. There are gamers that will play games for days or weeks, like they will just go in depth. And when I go to that game conference, man, I am, I'm the one that doesn't, like I'm not the geek there, 
<laughs> there are other people who are intense. But I grew up with like Monopoly and things like that. And I, I want a game where it doesn't matter what generation you're in. It doesn't matter your physical abilities. I want a game where we can get together, learn it and play it in an evening and move on. Because to me, that's a sweet spot. If you don't do that, you're going to have to force people to do it. It's like the cash flow game that we were just talking about. It takes you an hour or two to play. It's a little complex. And man, the kids are going to be rolling their eyes the whole time. But if I want a 45 minute game that's fun, I got to take a lot of concepts and I'm going to have to simplify them. So next slide, please. So what I have in here, and we can go in any direction you want. I basically have a breakdown throughout the game of how the game relates to all the things in the previous slide. So I will try to go pretty quick through this, but I'll need a little feedback as to where's the sweet spot and how much information you have. That I'm going to come from the perspective that most of the people here have not played the game yet, and you're just kind of curious what's going on. So the game starts with 21 million Bitcoin, right? There's, that's an absolute, and it all starts on a time chain. And so the first block over here that's in black, that's a Genesis block, and it's in 2009. And at the very end, the block, you can't see it on the screen, it's a little blurry, it says 2140. This is your time chain. All the Bitcoin starts, all 21 million is going to start on this time chain. And by the end of the game, it's all going to be distributed in all these different wallets. So the distributed ledger. By 2140, it's all going to be somewhere. Now, that could be, a, that could be lost, you know, lost keys or whatever. But 21 million is going to be somewhere, right? And along the way, you've got a couple having events. So you'll notice each, each of these squares has these little dots on them or circles on them. So we, in the game, there are 42 tokens. Each of them represent 500,000 Bitcoin. That's the 21 million. And so you, as you're mining in the game, you're going to start down here, move across the time chain, and then you've got a couple of halving events that happen. So you go from four to two, and then from two to one. And what this does is visually, you're communicating what a halving is. So think about it. We've got a halving coming up here in five months or whatever it is. I lost track. We've got a halving event coming up. This is a way of visually showing somebody what that means. And so that's the, that's the board, if you will. That's the starting point in the game is to kind of show what is this distributed ledger and, and how is the, uh, what is the schedule the, of actually getting this out? Because there's a specific time that we're trying to meet and that's what Bitcoin does. All right, next slide. All right, so what's, what's neat about the wallets, what happens in the game, there are six cards and they're just called wallets and so every player has their own color and on this there are a few spots there's a place to hold your your mining rigs your asics and there's a hot side and a cold side and so if someone asks you like what happens in, what's interesting in this is someone could ask you a question about like sam bankman freed and whatever else and i'm like i'm like you're not even in the game because in this game like you either have your Bitcoin in a place that's connected to the internet or you have your Bitcoin in a place that's not connected to the internet. If you're in, a, if you're in some kind of exchange, you're like, you're not even out there. You don't even have your keys, right? Um, but the, the idea of this, of course, is to, to show the concept of, of hey, the, every, every Bitcoin is gonna be somewhere in the game. And I just use colors to show where it was going in place of some long, uh, some long address. And so you can have all kinds of conversations. Tali already pointed out the biggest one to take away. If you are teaching your kids, at least from my perspective, let me say it that way. Do I really care if my kids can tell you about the having schedule, difficulty adjustment or any of this other stuff? I don't know. It'd be kind of nice, but if they know they need to have their own keys, number one, they need to be on the wallet. Number two, they need to be on that side because in the game, all of, your, all of your Bitcoin that's on that left side, other players can attack you. And, and that's one of the, the, the most important thing is how do we prevent our kids from getting rugged by the system, right? Well, first of all, get off, get off the exchange and then whatever way you got it, all right, go put your life savings in cold storage and keep a little bit on your hot wallet to go to a fancy conference in you know, El Salvador or something. So, all right, next. So the top part of that card, everybody starts out with one of these, these red tokens. And what that does is I wanted a way of, of showing that 
the, the mining idea. You, need, you have some kind of asset that you're using, and it happens to be a computer. So in the game, they don't see what a computer looks like. I actually, what I'm not talking about today, but I have a separate book where I put all my notes on this. And these are literally the visuals I use. Your, your little token that you're using represents actually this computer, and the only thing it does is it mines Bitcoin. And in the game, everybody starts with one of these, but you can purchase more. And then what that does is it, allow, it basically increases your hash power. So whether you use those words or not, that's not necessarily what's important. But in the game, you can, if you decide to use your Bitcoin and you purchase another asset, and that asset increases your chance of getting a winning block, then that's a, the, the concept of I've made an investment and I'm making a bet that it's going to pay off and I'm going to earn more Bitcoin for having invested in that asset than it cost me to buy it up, up, up front. So you can take that a lot of different ways, but this is a, this is a mining rig in the game. Yeah, we'll just keep going. Yeah. And, and then you talk about rewards. I struggled with this when I made the game because I really wanted to have, I, I was trying to figure out how do I show transaction fees and what happens with those? And it was just too much. The game, the game is already, if you're not technical, it can take you five, you know, four or five, six kind of rounds or, or blocks rather being, being mined to, to really click in. And it was just too complex. So I took those off. All you have in this is literally the block reward. And that's how the money is getting from the time chain to the individual cards. And so, you, again, you start with the, the, the four in the first epoch, and then you go to two, and then you go to one. And then by the time the last Bitcoin is mined, you're just going to look and see who, who has successfully hobbled up the most Bitcoin onto their, um, onto their wallets. So what I'm trying to show here on, on, the, on the, the right side as you look at this, you have different sets of cards in the game. And one of those cards is just a, a bunch of basically people cards or player cards. And so you are trying to form a transaction. So not only are you trying to mine that block, but when you do that, money's also going between the wallets. And it's, what's actually pretty cool is you can go back at the end of the game and you'll have the whole time chain because you're stacking these up. Every time there's a successful transaction, that, that Bitcoin is actually going to move. So red sends one to, to green. If that was a play by a player and it was successfully mined, literally one of the tokens would go from that card to that card. And then whichever player was the miner that mined that, they get from the previous slide, they would get the reward. And it goes into their hot wallet. And now other people are going to go try to attack them because... <laughs> We're going to get to it in another slide. Red is not just going to agree to do this, right? They're not going to sign off on this. And so there's another part of this game that was the hardest part to figure out was how to deal with this idea that if you have your keys, then nobody can move your, your Bitcoin, right? And it actually is what led to the, the split of the hot wallet and the, and the cold wallet. But bottom line is, to simplify the game, every block is essentially one transaction. So if you want to get that, that Bitcoin into your wallet, some other Bitcoin is moving between. So by the end of the game, there's a whole lot of movement going on. And there's actually a lot of political things that, you know, I'll, I'll do this for you if you do this for me, or how about this? And it, it's, it's kind of fun to watch. Um, some groups are very competitive. Some are a little bit more cooperative. There's a... Uh, you see a lot, of, a lot of true colors of people come out when they, when they play this. But, all right, go ahead. Okay. Think about trying to explain to someone the purpose of a difficulty adjustment. And as an engineer, this is me going to Tali saying, hey, this is, this is how many blocks, and this is how the percent is worked out, and this is what it does. And, and from her perspective, it was all just blah, 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 blah. Right? And I'll say, well... You can have a governor on your car that, uh, that kind of only allows you to go so fast. But I actually like the, I like the analogy of a pacemaker better. So what's going to happen in the game is every time your heartbeat's going too fast, you're mining too fast, it's going to get more difficult. And vice versa. If there aren't enough blocks getting mined, it's going to make things easier. And so what happens is every time someone successfully mines a block in the game, the difficulty adjustment is going to get harder, it's going to go down by one. 
and vice versa. Every time, for whatever reason, you do not successfully mine a new block, it's going to get easier to try to speed it up. And it, okay, it doesn't match the exact two weeks and all. It doesn't, it doesn't match exactly. But the concept is you've got this pacemaker and every, every turn in that game, it's either getting easier or harder depending on how fast blocks are being mined. It's a pacemaker. And I'm thinking, I think I can explain a pacemaker to my kids, right? And, and that was the, that's the idea of this. This was, um, this is interesting. I get more into like in my book and stuff, but you can, you start getting into how fast technology is in, increasing and you go back to the game theory. I didn't, I didn't go into that part of it, but if you're, again, you're Satoshi and you're saying, I have this timeline of when I want things to go out, but I don't know how fast computers are going to be. I don't know how many miners are going to be. I don't know if China's going to ban mining. I don't know any of that, right? So how do you build in without a centralized person or entity to trust, how do you build that in? And so the brilliance of the difficulty adjustment, at least from an engineering standpoint, I'm just like, well, it's simple. What's that? You just have one minute more. One more minute. We have one more minute. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I didn't keep track of time. Okay, next. In the game, yeah, keeping game, we have uh, bad guys can attack you. And you roll a die to defend yourself. You got a 50-50 chance. Uh, I wanted to announce while we're here in El Salvador uh, in Q1 next of uh, 2024, I have my lightning game coming out because, go ahead, next slide. It's going to be called Channel Up. And it's going to talk about Bitcoin as a medium of exchange. And there's a lot of FUD out there about how, well, there's a lot of FUD. I think a lot of everybody in this room is, is familiar with that. So I'm very excited about it. If I had more than one minute, I'd go into more detail. Can you go to the, I have one slide here. We've been playtesting this at meetups. We playtested it at TabConf. And again, the, the idea is how do we teach through games? And we're excited that we, we want to take the success we've had teaching Bitcoin with HODL up. And now we're going to teach Lightning with, uh, with Channel Up. Next slide. Okay, oh, wait, see. wait, the objective, by the way, you're going to open and close your nodes. You're going to balance your liquidity. And the first one to earn enough sats through, their, through the routing fees to buy two pizzas with their Bitcoin is the winner. So, all right, next. All right, we love, we love talking with people, whether you're homeschoolers, you're gamers, you're pre-coiners, Bitcoiners, whatever it is. Um, we love connecting with people. So please reach out to us. Um, we actually have some cool stickers we have made. If anybody wants to come up and see us after, we got some stickers for, our, for those icons. And if I had more, I, I'm already over the time, so I don't think I can ask any. <laughs> see us afterwards. Uh, we'll come out in the hallway and, and we can answer questions. Thank you so much to Tyler.